And some people say that Angkor Sais uh, is so as a, uh, as a school, for example, for for the world. Is it correct that Absolutely. idea? Absolutely, we are. You know, you learn a lot from Angkor learn, Sais. First of all, we learn a lot about the builders, who were the masons, who have not having theodolite. They don't have drone. <laughs> they don't have. No, it's true. We are we are learning. One thing which is important, these people, they had a, a very long experience of mathematics, of uh, geometry. They were not ignorant, on the contrary. So we learn how, without any technology that we have today, we have, we have yeah. the mobile, we have the, the you know, camera, etc. But they, they could build uh, big temples. And they could monument. build big temples standing. Standing so for more than one thousand so years. <laughs> for one than one thousand years. So this is the first lesson that we learn about the technology that was existing, bringing the stone from the Kulen, uh, cutting can, yeah. cutting the stone, sh choosing the site, uh, organizing the water, uh, water uh, system. flow yeah, water around flow. around the temple. All this is what we call the old technology, which was based on any modern thing. <laughs> but this shows that this is another element of the importance of this society, the Khmer society, which was having a very high level, very high intellectual and scientific level. Otherwise, you cannot build a temple. It will- You mean will, in the old days? In the old days. Imagine we are in the 10th century under the uh, king Jaw Jawarman. The king is having around him people to whom he was giving order, I want to build the temple of Akorat. And they were working, the architects, the geometers, to see the land, to see the quality of the soul. I mean, they are, all this is what we learn today when we are working on the restoration of a temple. Then you have the statues. You have artists, now you, you see modern artists are taking lessons uh, from, from, from sculpture. the sculptures and the paintings and the bas-reliefs. The bas-reliefs in, in, uh, in, in, in Korvat, in Bayonne, they are extraordinary. Everybody is coming. This is a creation by people, again, that didn't have a lot of material that we have today <laughs> in, at, yeah. our, at our disposal. This is, I think, what should be explained in an interpretation center to the visitors who are not familiar with the history of this Khmer period. Very interesting, uh, Professor, and a very simple, to, uh, simple question to you. You have worked uh, with Uncle or for Uncle or for more than uh, 30 years already, and you have learned a lot and a lot, I think. But you think you, I mean, you need to learn more about Uncle, or maybe you, you think you can know all about Uncle because uh, Uncle what is a, has a big history and then history uh, cre uh, will, uh, is created and will be uh, recreated again yeah. and again. So yeah. you know all or you don't know all I, yet? <laughs> I think that very modestly, I must say that each time I come, each time I learn more. There is no end for the learning. The temple of Taprom that is under the restoration and very uh, fine restoration was posing to us and to our colleagues, um, architects and engineers uh, uh, from Cambodia, from the Apsara, uh, a lot of questions that we have to resolve. So we have to each time learn how to deal with what was done in Taprom. If we go to the Bayonne and we work with the Japanese team uh, on, on the Bayonne, we learn how this temple and all these faces, which are extraordinary, which are speaking. <laughs> People are taking pictures. Why? Yeah. Because they feel that they are taking something. They are smiling. I mean, they are uh, smiling they, yeah. and they are giving them something that they will, will remain in their memory. When they go back to their country, they took the picture and say, oh, look, we have this very beautiful face, how this face was done, how it was mounted at this height, 
we have. So you you always we are ask always the we are always coming to uh, issues that we have to discuss, but also we are learning each time how the Khmer in the period between the seventh century to the fourteenth century how they were dealing with managing this huge area. And that question uh, is still unknown yet for you. Yeah, for no, I'm still discovering. Uh, my my last visit uh, three days ago in Sambor Prikuk showed us uh, another way of uh, of the of the technology which was used for the bricks, and we are having one of the temple that we consider should be considered as a model of br brick construction, even for the modern constructors. So another question for you, uh, Professor. When you came uh, to Angkor and when you saw Khen Paul for the first time, what was your feeling, your sentiment? I, I think you, we, we feel very small in front of the grandeur of, the, of these temples. Whether you are in front of Angkor Wat or, or in front of Bayonne or in front of uh, uh, Bantes Rey. I mean, these are... Uh, extraordinary, extraordinary realization of human. And you feel that you are so small in front of all these temples. This was my first uh, reaction when I came. My goodness, this is so big, you know. When you are at the bottom of the tower yeah. in in Bakeng, and yeah. you see this tower, you know, yeah. like this, and you, and, and you, you understand there was no scaffolding in, in uh, 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 the scaffolding was in bamboo, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> probably. We don't know because we don't have all, all the... We have to learn every day how this, uh, this civilization has given to the man of today a lot of lessons, a lot of information. And each time you come, each time you discover something, something else. So you come and you learn, you come and you learn. It means... Uh... It is a non-stop learning. It's And uh, Professor Beishau, he said that uh, uh, Angkor Wat uh, Sai is a place uh, where you visit and revisit. He said that. So each time. Each, each time. time. So And it means each they time come you, to learn, discover new things? Each time you di discover new things. As I said, in, in Sambor Prekuk, we went probably five or six times before. Uh, I was present when... It was inscribed on the World Heritage List, and then we went to see the colleagues, how they were working, and then we discovered this temple uh, in bricks, which by chance is absolutely intact, absolutely intact, so we can see and learn exactly how it was done. Okay, you, you, you have been here for almost uh, more than uh, 30, 30 years year already yeah. and you have visited uh, many times already so my honest question to you very honest, honestly to you you get bored of uh, visiting uh, Uncle Sai? No, never never because as I said uh, I am speak when I speak uh, to uh, in other universities not here but outside I, I always bring the example of Angkor and showing that Uh, we, because people, when you are in Europe, sometimes they say they know only, ah, you go to Angkor Wat. And I say, no, I go to Angkor. Angkor Wat is only one, one element temple. Yeah, one. of a, 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 a plurality uh, of temples. And each temple it has its character. They're not similar. <laughs> They're not similar. And that's why, as you, 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 you are raising this question, are you discovering? Yes. Angkor, for us, and I think I, I can speak on behalf of my colleagues, the experts uh, who are coming regularly for the ICC meeting, we are discovering each time something new. So, according to your observation, it means that uh, almost uh, Kempol have a different uh, architecture, different absolutely. style, different absolutely. character, something yeah. like that? Yeah, yeah absolutely. The temples have, has, have been built in different places, in different uh, uh, topography, and that's why they are not, it's not uh, uh, an, an alignment of similar temples. No, each temple, if you go to Rulos, if you go to uh, uh, Bakong, if you go to Plombakeng, they are all different. 
they are all different. They are all offering specific questions for the present architects and the present archaeologists.